Have you ever wondered how gold, the symbol of wealth and power, is made? Gold, a lustrous yellow metal, has captivated the human imagination for millennia. Its allure transcends time and cultures from the ancient Egyptians who revered it as the skin of their deities, to the gold rush prospectors who staked their dreams on finding this precious metal. In the annals of human history, gold has played a pivotal role. Its rarity and beauty made it a coveted item of trade and a symbol of power. Gold has been immortalized in the myths and artworks of ancient civilizations, serving as a testament to our age-old fascination with this metal. From the golden fleece in Greek mythology to the gold-laden tombs of the pharaohs, the allure of gold has been a constant thread weaving through the tapestry of human history. Gold's allure is timeless, but its journey from being a mineral in the earth to a prized possession is a tale worth telling. Let's travel back in time to the first instances of gold mining. Picture ancient civilizations where the gleam of gold first caught our ancestors' eyes. The yearning for this radiant metal began in the cradles of early societies like Egypt and Rome, where gold mining first took root. In ancient Egypt, the allure of gold was already well established by the 4th millennium BC. Gold was considered a divine and indestructible metal, associated with the sun and capable of staving off evil. It was so revered that the capstones on the pyramids of Giza were made of solid gold. The Egyptians mastered the art of gold mining using simple tools and techniques, they exploited alluvial deposits, gold that had eroded from the rocks and accumulated in sand or gravel bars in the riverbeds. Workers would kneel beside the Nile River, washing sediment in a pan to separate the heavy gold particles. It was laborious work, but the shimmering payoff was considered well worth it. Now let's journey west to the grandeur of Rome. The Romans, renowned for their engineering prowess, took a more systematic approach to gold mining, they developed large-scale hydraulic mining methods for the extraction of gold. Water was a crucial part of the process, used to both loosen the gold from the earth and to wash it out. Their innovations in mining technology were so effective that some are still used today. Gold in these ancient societies wasn't just a shiny object of desire. It was a symbol of power and immortality, used to adorn temples and palaces to fashion idols and jewelry, and to trade for goods and services. Gold was a universal currency, a sign of wealth and prestige. The thirst for gold has led mankind to dig deeper and further, giving birth to modern gold mining. But that's a tale for another scene. For now, let's marvel at the ingenuity of our ancestors who first saw the glow in the riverbeds and hills and dared to reach out and grasp it. As time progressed, so did the methods for extracting this precious metal. The advent of industrialization brought about a significant shift in gold mining, transforming it from a labor-intensive operation to a more mechanized and efficient process. This was a time when the world was rapidly moving towards large-scale production, and gold mining was no exception. Picture this. In the early days miners would use simple tools like picks and shovels to dig into the earth. But as the Industrial Revolution took hold, they began to harness the power of heavy machinery. Massive excavators, drills and crushers became the new norm capable of moving and processing vast amounts of earth in relatively short periods. This revolution in gold mining was not just about speed and efficiency, it was also about reaching deeper into the earth than ever before. The introduction of underground mining techniques enabled miners to tap into gold deposits that were previously inaccessible, vastly increasing the potential yield. And yet, with these advancements came new challenges. As the scale of gold mining expanded, so too did its impact on the environment the use of heavy machinery, and the extraction of large volumes of earth, have resulted in significant land degradation. Not to mention the chemicals used in the processing of gold, such as cyanide and mercury, pose serious environmental and health risks. Efforts are ongoing to mitigate these impacts. Modern mining operations are increasingly adopting more sustainable practices such as reclamation, where the land is restored to its natural state after mining is completed. The industry is also exploring cleaner processing techniques that use less harmful chemicals. Despite these efforts, the environmental footprint of gold mining remains a contentious issue. It's a delicate balance between the pursuit of this precious metal and the preservation of our planet. The quest for gold has indeed become more complex and impactful, but how is this raw material transformed into the shiny gold we know? Extracting gold from the earth is just the beginning of its journey. Once the gold ore has been mined, it undergoes a complex process before it becomes the shiny gold we all know and love. Let's delve into these fascinating processes, shall we? First off, the raw gold ore needs to be crushed into a fine powder. 
This is done using heavy machinery called crushers which pulverize the ore into tiny particles. This crushing process increases the surface area of the gold, making it easier to extract. Next comes the heap leaching process. Picture a giant heap of crushed ore. A weak cyanide solution is then sprayed over this heap. Cyanide might sound scary, but it's actually perfect for this job because it bonds easily with gold, separating it from the rest of the crushed rock. The cyanide and gold solution then trickles down the heap into a collection pool. This process can take several weeks but patience pays off as we're now one step closer to pure gold. But we're not done yet. The solution collected is now subjected to a process known as gold cyanidation. This involves adding zinc to the solution, which causes a chemical reaction that separates the gold from the cyanide. The result is a solid gold precipitate, while the cyanide remains in solution. The gold precipitate is then filtered out, and what we have left is a mixture of gold and other metals. This mixture is heated to very high temperatures in a process known as smelting. The heat melts the gold allowing it to separate from the other metals, and voila! We have pure gold, ready to be shaped into whatever form we desire. From jewelry to coins this precious metal has journeyed from the heart of the earth to our hands, undergoing a transformation as remarkable as it is complex. Now that we have our pure gold, how do we determine its quality? Not all gold is created equal. A simple statement, yet it carries a wealth of meaning. You see the quality of gold is measured in carats, a term you've likely heard but may not fully understand. Let's delve into this golden mystery. Carats essentially tell us how much pure gold is present in a piece. 24 carat or 24k gold is the purest form. It contains 100% gold with no alloy metals mixed in. Its bright warm glow is enchanting but it's also soft and malleable, making it less suitable for everyday items like jewelry. Down the carat scale we find 18k gold, which contains 75% pure gold and 25% alloy metals. This blend offers a balance between purity and durability. It retains a rich hue, while being more resistant to wear and tear. It's a popular choice for high-end jewelry. Then we have 14k gold with 58% pure gold. It's even more durable and it's often used in jewelry that's meant to withstand daily use like wedding bands. The color of 14k gold is slightly less vibrant, but it's a worthy trade-off for the increased strength. Finally, there's 10k gold, the lowest carat gold that can still legally be sold as gold in many countries. It contains just 41% gold, making it the most durable but also the least pure. It's often used in items where durability is paramount like class rings or sports medals. The purity of gold doesn't just affect its durability and color, it also impacts its value. Pure gold is of course more valuable than alloyed gold. So, a piece of 24k gold will always be worth more than an equivalent weight of 10k gold. Moreover, the purity of gold also determines its use in different industries. For example, the electronics industry often uses high purity gold due to its excellent conductivity and resistance to corrosion. The journey of gold from the earth to our hands is a fascinating tale of human ingenuity and desire. This tale, told in carrots, weaves together the allure of purity, the practicality of durability, and the relentless pursuit of value. So, how is gold made? Let's recap. Gold, the symbol of wealth and opulence, has a history as rich as its gleam. From the early days of gold mining where people panned rivers and streams for this precious metal, we've come a long way. Modern gold mining now involves intricate processes and advanced machinery to extract gold from the Earth's crust. Once the gold is mined, it's still far from the shiny adornments we're familiar with. The raw gold goes through a process of purification, where it's melted, refined, and purified to remove impurities. And how do we know a good quality gold? It's all about its purity measured in carats. The higher the carat, the purer the gold. Choosing the right gold means understanding its quality, its purity, and its origin. Gold, a symbol of wealth and power, continues to captivate us with its shine and allure, a testament to the remarkable journey it undertakes from the earth to our hands.